Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones from Projector Reviews, and joining me is Kenny from Epson. And today we're going to be talking about some of their cool, um, uh, compact home entertainment projectors. So, Kenny, how are you? I'm great. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me here, Joel, uh, Phil. So one thing we'd like to do is we'd like to thank our sponsors, AV Pro Edge and Meridio, for helping me put on this year's Fall Projection Summit, where we talk about all the great products, whether it's um, projectors, screens, and even cables that you need to create a great home theater experience. So today, we're going to be talking to Epson about their Epic Vision Mini Series projectors. So Kenny, can you talk a little bit about this product? Yeah, yeah. But let me start with saying um, this is a very timely discussion. Um, we have seen huge increase in demand for content, home entertainment, and especially mobile entertainment. And the whole Epic Vision Mini series is designed exactly for that upsurging demand. So the whole idea about Epic Vision Mini is very simple. Epic experience in a mini package, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is you can bring the epic um, audio visual experience with you anywhere you want. You can project it indoor, outdoor. Um, you don't have to be confined in any space. And that's the whole idea of Epic Vision Mini. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, there's, I, um, the, I have a person, his name is Cam Valentine. He does a lot of our more portable type solutions or transportable type solutions. He's a, he's a military guy too. And he takes, mm -hmm. um, instead of using the little itty bitty TV in his hotel room, he travels with a, uh, a good um, transportable, something he can carry from room to room to room, and a 75 inch elite um, Yardmaster 2 screen. Mm -hmm. And what he does is when he goes to his, to his um, hotel room for like a week, he sets up his little miniature theater. And and he also uses it for you know for camping and barbecues and and stuff like that. So it does um, offer a lot of um, advantages having um, something that you could take with you that has everything inside. So you said that there was you mentioned to me before this that there was four parts that make up the Epic Vision Mini. Can you talk about that? Thanks. Uh, yeah. So interestingly, you mentioned what your friend's experience is. There's two key points there, right? Mm -hmm. It's a big screen. And then it's portable. So mm -hmm. we we break it down into four really key features that has to go into a successful portable projectors that you can really use and you would enjoy. So the mm -hmm. first one is a big and bright picture, right? So imagine if you are watching a game, uh, a football game, and you're watching it on a 50 inch uh, flat panel TV, you can't even figure out where the ball is, right? Mm -hmm. So now if you have a projector that can project 100 inch and even 150 inch then you can see all the motions, all the actions going on. You can see the emotion uh, of the players and the and the audience in the stadium. So the whole experience is just way better than just watching on a on a on a 50 inch TV. Uh, in addition to the to the picture quality itself, you have to have good audio, right? Um, you want to hear the raindrops falling. Um, in movies, or you can hear all the airplane whooshing across the sky. So we, we figure out you have to have a good speaker that is built into the projector. And we have great speaker that is built into our Epic Vision Mini series projectors. And then it goes to the portability uh, side of the story, right? Um, the one, the key thing about uh, 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 mobile is not only about the form factor. You, you not only need a small projector, you also need to be easy and quick to set up to install in any place you want, so that you would put you would enjoy putting it in your backpack and then you can set it up fast. You don't want to you know mess with all the HDMI cables or different input devices. So we figured we had a great solution for that. We would build in an Android TV OS for that. So it's great for streaming, great for gaming, and then lastly, the projector itself. Has to has good aesthetic taste, right? You want it to look nice. It's not just you know going at the back of your room. You don't want to hide it. You want to put it in the center of your room. You want to show it to your friends. So mm -hmm. the whole series, and as you see here, the the 12 and the 11 is where we we um, put all these concepts and put it into our product design. There's more to the projection system than just the projector. It's 
Where am I going to get the sound? Where am I going to get the content? Is it two important things that really make something um, portable? So yes, you need to have a nice, bright, good looking picture, but you also have to think about those other things that are required to make it happen. You got to have great, you got to have sound because sound is 50% of the experience. And where am I going to get the content? And this really, these systems really, really simplify that. Like when you look at the the EF12, and of course, it's got to look, um, it has to look good. Now, you mentioned that there are two series, the um, the EF12 and the EF11. Can you talk a little, little bit about, real quickly, about the differences between these two? Yeah, so we had two products. Um, the, the idea is we want to give the options to our customers. The EF12 is really a premium package. Everything is all in one. So you get Android TV built in, you get mm -hmm. uh, Yamaha speakers, so great product. Um, uh, everything inside the box already, and then we have the EF11. So it's a, a, a lighter option. It's more portable, but at the same time, it's really no bells and whistles. Um, you can connect your your streaming devices to it easily. Um, there's, mm -hmm. but then the the whole similarity of the two products is they share the same awesome. Epson optical engine, so you get the great um, projection performance, picture quality, awesome picture out of the two uh, products. Okay, so let's talk a few things about a couple of these things. The first thing, um, many of these um, smaller uh, projectors, heck, many of the consumer projectors you see now um, utilize um, DLP, and um, but there are some advantages to 3LCD, which is why Epson utilizes it pretty much in all of your projectors, whether you're looking at a serious home theater projector, a large um, professional, large venue projector, or even one of these small, um, more portable projectors. Can you talk about why 3LCD? Yeah, so we have been using 3LCD, as you said, all our projectors for many, many years, and there's a reason for that. So 3LCD is actually the technology that allows you to uh, output the three colors, the, the R, G, and B, in mm -hmm. every scene, 100% of the time. So it, it gives you two things. One, you have the same level of brightness. So a lot of the um, projectors uh, in the market and those using DLP, they may have a high white brightness, but then they would have a different or not consistent uh, brightness when they have color images, right? But think about it, most people, when they use projectors, they do not only project a white, sc a white screen, right? They want mm -hmm. to enjoy content, and all of them have colors. So the 3LCD chip would allow us to enjoy the same level of brightness uh, consistently across the board, right? Yeah, so bright yeah. red is bright red. Um, because if, you, if you've ever seen a DLP, basically, it only shows you um, red, then it shows you blue, then it shows you green, and maybe it'll put in um, a white element or, or another element maybe to and it's only showing you one of those but if i'm trying to do purple I don't know, you know it's, it's a little bit of this one a little bit of that one it's not you know it's not both are on at the same time i've always noticed that the three lcd tend to have richer color and you don't have to deal with things such as some people are sensitive to to rainbow the rainbow effect now the dlps are getting better but you can still see it and um and also if you try to take a picture with your camera on your phone, you'll see it as well. So I have to like shoot like DLP samples at really show shutter speeds. If not, I get these crazy rainbows in my photograph. Take a take a three LCD. I don't care how fast your your camera speed is. You actually see all the colors because it's showing you all the colors all the time. Um, another thing that's neat about this projector is a lot of times you'll see you know people are rate their projectors at a as a thousand lumens LED. So so. Yeah. And then you ask them, okay, well, what is an LED lumen? How is that actually measured? What is it the 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 actual unified term for or universal way of measuring a projector is ANSI lumens. And for a little projector, this sucker is bright. It's like a thousand ANSI lumens, and that is because it utilizes this kind of new, unique uh, um, micro laser system, which is also, by the way, these two features are in the both the EF12 and the EF11. So can you talk about the micro laser? Exactly, so it's actually very rare, at, and especially at this price point, under $1,000, to have a laser in a projector. Um, laser gives you like way better performance than a bulb, um, 
key you know key advantage of that is you get longevity so the laser lasts is 20,000 hours you don't have to worry about replacing any bulb so mm -hmm. which is the key pain point of customers buying a projector. And then as you are saying, laser give us the ability to project really, really bright lumens in, into all the pictures. So uh, that that's how we get into a thousand lumens. And as you said, it's an NC lumen. So it's not like um, having weird calculation. It's really a thousand lumens that you can get on the screen. And then there's also other advantages. So for example, laser is instant on, instant off. So you don't need to wait for the for the projector to warm up. You don't need to you know let it cool down, and then also it doesn't dissipate a lot of heat. So it's much mm -hmm. more quieter because we don't need to uh, you know a complicated heat dissipation system in the projector. So all of that helps us keep everything in a small package, and it just gives you a much better um, projection experience. Yes, yes, and and like I said, the picture on this guy is is absolutely amazing i always say that um think of a projector as a bunch of ingredients you know just like if i was making a meal what really really separates projectors a lot of times are not just is are not the parts it's the the recipe which i call which is basically the video processing that really stitches all of those things together because you can have the best parts in the world and if you don't know how to how to utilize them you're not going to get very good results. So really good video processing is critical to maximize that great 3 LCD imaging system as well as that laser light source. So can you talk a little bit about your, your video process? Nice, nice. I really like your analogy of cooking because cooking is not a science, it's an art. And it's the same as the projection technology. So you, we have great optical engine, but we also have great processing technology that accompanies it. We have mm -hmm. like, absence more than 30 years of experience in tuning colors and that goes all into the processing chip that is uh inside the ef12 and ef11 um, that allows us to put a lot of really innovations into the machine so one of them is scene adaptive gamma so that allows us to analyze each scene and adjust the uh color curve at the brightest and the darkest area so you can enjoy the details and also enjoy the great picture quality no matter how bright the, the scene is mm -hmm. and then another example would be the detail enhancement so it, the, the projector itself is a 1080p but trust me if you put in a 4k input you look at it it's just so sharp that you think it's actually better than a 1080p and that is that is where our detail enhancement technology comes in we also have given a lot of color mode presets and uh, in addition to all the ordinary ones like cinema mode where you would enjoy the movie, we also added uh, a mode called Vivid, which uh, mimics the, the way people see a flat panel TV. So if you are streaming and you're enjoying a TV show, uh, Vivid mode would give you the best color performance to match with that content. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also our uh, projector accepts an HDR signal and that absolutely, you know, pop the pop the picture uh, even yeah. further. Yeah, and and this is a big point. Uh, um, Epson is probably one of the largest projection manufacturers on the planet, and they make some really, really. If you go on our website, um, all of their home theater projectors have won awards because they really are passionate about delivering a great picture quality. And all of that know-how of building at that price point it trickles down into even projectors like these. So they have a certain standard when it comes to color, accuracy, and capabilities, and they just make sure that all their projectors handle it. Now, there's a couple of things you brought up that I do want to point out. That's kind of cool. It's a, it's a 1080p projector, but it can accept a 4K HDR signal. Why is that important? Like, say you're doing a, um, something in your um, for your buddies, and you have one TV connected, and it's playing the, the game, and then you want to connect the projector, you know, via an HDMI cable to another location. Um, the problem with that is a lot of times the, t the resolution, if you run it through a splitter, is going to drop to the inputs of the lowest common denominator. So if this projector did not accept 4K and HDR, you wouldn't, if, it's, if you connect it to the same splitter, you wouldn't be able to see that on your TV. So now if you use this, a lot of times people use these for business too, by the way. I've seen them where you have, a TV in the room, but then they also want to use one of these projected on a screen 
so and I want to share it on both on both screens I know that the projectors inputs are not going to limit the uh, the signal and um, in the in the room which is actually kind of a, a cool thing and like I said the picture quality on this thing is absolutely amazing in fact when I reviewed it I absolutely loved it cam took it he did his reviews and he was like wow um, uh, my other reviewer Jared took it and he was like this is the best of the of the small portables that we've seen and we it's hot product if you want to check out the review check it out on projectorreviews.com we absolutely loved this unit the bottom think of it as the bottom is a projector and the top is basically a high quality soundbar like a high quality little mini soundbar so can you talk about this yeah so a lot of customers their first impression is wow like i can imagine there's such a powerful sound coming out of that small box and many people may not realize it's actually really really difficult um it's a it's an engineering problem that we're trying to solve here uh you have to put in two speakers and both of them are five watts into a projector and you want to have a great wide sound stage that um that gives you great bass and powerful bass without having a subwoofer so how do we mm -hmm. do it so we have a great partnership with yamaha which is a well established brand they have tons of experience in tuning hall acoustics and music instruments and we really built these things from bottoms up so just looking at the physical design first um, we have research about the different angles on the speakers and we optimize the angles so that now the audience when they listen to the projector it sounds like the the music is coming from the screen right in front of you instead of like from the back where you put in your projector um, there's things like the enclosure. So if you look at the uh, rectangle box that is behind the speakers, this is where we enhance the the, the, the echo and enhance the bass. And this gives you the, the, the frequency and the, um, the audio performance even without a subwoofer. Mm -hmm. And then we also research about the different materials. We uh, put in premium materials for the wiring and all the, uh, the, the speaker mesh. So all of that goes into the, the physical design and that helps us put it in a small package. Mm -hmm. Now, a big thing about this too, by the way, is this is not a very big projector. So think of it as, it's like a seven inch cube. So it may look big on this picture, but this sucker is only about this big. It's not, I could literally hold it like this. So it's not like this gigantic thing. Uh, there's more to it than just the construction of the speakers. There's a bunch of other things too, correct? Yeah, exactly. So again, you know, audio is just like picture, right? It's an art. So there's a lot of software and the algorithm that we goes in to enhance the audio experience. So what we call this the Yamaha's proprietary DSP technology, digital sound processing, that goes into it. Um, it allows you to, as I just said before, adjust for the listening position, and then it enhances the different frequencies even without a subwoofer um, but what it gives you is if you are um, navigating on our menu and you would see a lot of different options for you to adjust the sound performance and that that is a reflection of all the technologies that we have so mm -hmm. we had uh, six different sound modes that is tailored for different contents and that use some of the, our technology so for example um, you have the theater mode where you would enjoy movies and so we figured you want powerful bass great we give you powerful bass uh, and then we give you virtual surround sound so you literally hear sound all across you 360 degrees and then we have also um, stadium mode so if you're watching a game you want to have that spatial experience so we we um, we emphasize the the echo and the sound effect so that you feels like you're in the in the stadium right mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's also one very interesting um, mode that we added, uh, the TV mode. So the TV mode, imagine you're l watching a lot of um, uh, TV shows and there's a lot of people talking, there's a lot of dialogue. So the TV mode allows you to hear clearly uh, what people are saying uh, while not uh, compromising any of the, 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 the music effect, the background music of, of that content. And the last thing is, where am I going to get the content? And that's where the smarts come in. And this thing is um, uh, includes Android TV, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So we had a built-in Android TV. Um, it, it's, let, let me just, you know, maybe divert a little bit and talk about 
um, the different implementation of Android TV. Um, there's a lot of like projectors out there that claims that they have uh, Android TV system. So there's like a set of implementation where um, they use things like Aptoid, right? Um, they, they, they build a, a system based on the Android language. Uh, and then there is also the official Google's Android TV system. So mm -hmm. there's a huge difference to that. So I'll get into it. But basically, the EF12 uses the Google official Android mm -hmm. TV system. So what that gives you is you have the official access to the Google Play Store. And all the apps there are authenticated. It gets updated automatically uh, uh, over the top OTA. And then you get um, Chromecasting which mm -hmm. is great because now you can cast your content from your phone or your tablet and you can enjoy streaming. And most people love uh, right now use projectors. 90% of the time would be for streaming. Mm -hmm. So you get, you know, great apps, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, YouTube, YouTube TV, like all, all of that is available on the Android TV system. So we think the, the built-in Android TV really allows you to get rid of, um, buying another input device and you just need to you know power on the projector and you can access all the content with you whenever you have wi-fi connection yeah yeah or a hotspot I, I like my friend when he travels all yep. he needs is his phone and he just hot spots from his phone um which these days you get a 5g phone you have no problem streaming amazon prime video using your phone's wi-fi as the hot spot does it have any kind of voice capabilities or anything like that by the way yeah, exactly. So we had a Google Assistant function. Basically, um, most people take it for granted that you can enjoy all the uh, usability with a great uh, remote, um, but uh, we have put a lot of thought into it. So if you look from top down from this remote, you know, you have the uh, dedicated button for YouTube for different apps, and then you have the, in the middle, you have that microphone button. So this is where you can just press the button and use the voice to control the projector. You can ask it to play content, you can ask weather, you can uh, use it even to control uh, home devices. So if you have other smart devices that is connected to your Google Home network, uh, you can use use these remote to control them, like uh, switch on the, 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 the bulb and, and things, right? Yeah, you can turn uh, the lights on and off. You can tell it when it's time to watch a movie, you can tell the projector to turn off the lights in the room, which is pretty, yeah. which is pretty slick. Because it's so compact, and it's so portable, you can you can set it up anywhere. Kids movie nights or or like, you know, in, in a bedroom. That's I, I'll tell you that I, I did not want to send this back. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was hoping this is the one of those ones you guys would not really want back because because I could see so many applications and kids birthday parties. I was planning on actually keeping it and utilizing it in my in my bedroom because I don't really have room we have, um, for a traditional flat panel. But I do have room to utilize something like this that has all the internal apps built in. So all I have to do is get um, power to it, and I would have been good to go. And the sound system easily is as good as any flat panel TV you're ever going to see. And that's why we gave it a hot product award, because we believe this is one of the best um, portable, um, uh, portable, transportable type projectors that we have tested. Because of its brightness, its 3 LCD. The fact that it's laser, it's it's full HD, um, built-in Android TV, um, great sound system, and it even has HDR10 and HLG. For those who don't know, HDR10 is more of the pre-recorded streaming services movie way of getting high dynamic range, and HLG is what they're going to be utilizing for for live broadcasts. So when it's like a football game, it's probably what's going to be shot. So for you, pretty much you know that re regardless of whether the HDR, how the HDR is going to be shot. If you want to take advantage of HDR with this projector, you can do so. Now, love this guy, fully featured. But sometimes, as you mentioned earlier, um, I may already have an Apple TV connected to it because I'm just going to utilize it in, in my room that I already have an Apple TV, or I need it to be more compact, or maybe I even have a sound bar. Like in, I may have had a sound bar, and I just lead. What I need is just a good picture, you know, and if and I do take it portable, I do want good sound too, but not it's not as important. So I don't need the smart features. I don't need as big of a sound system and I'm looking for a smaller form factor. That is where the 11 comes in, correct? Exactly, yeah, you nailed it, Phil. So, you know, the the EF11 has the same optical engine, right? So you get a thousand lumens. And 
the key here is, you know, we, we want it to be a, a simple and neat solution, right? So if you have uh, your favorite streaming stick, you have Apple TV, you have already invested in uh, a Fire TV and uh, you can roll cool, then you can uh, just plug it in. So we had HDMI port on the EF11. It also have an audio out uh, port. So that will allow you to connect to whatever audio system you have. It's not only just uh, a stereo speaker, you you can even connect it to your um, 5.1 uh, sound system. So this gives you a lot of flexibility, gives you a lot of options. And because it's so so much smaller, it's like just three pounds. You can you can you can you know open a lot of different use cases with this this machine. You can put it in the kitchen, right? If you want to you know watch a uh, a cooking recipe, or you can like uh, put it in a backpack. And as you said, like um, if you're going on a business trip, then it's easy for you to just put it in your backpack and just just go with it, right? Uh, I just think that the EF11 really um, it really fits into the current mold and change of habits right now. People uh you know they they move a lot they want the mobile solution and i think the ef11 is really uh for that purpose exactly actually one thing that's cool if you look over on the side is a headphone jack so say you want to watch this thing at night you could literally just put a pair of really good headphones on and um and project this at a wall and and now you have your little theater without disturbing other people which is which is pretty 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 cool all right Yep. So same brightness that you talked about, three LCD, still 1080p, still the same laser array, still has a, a pretty decent sound system for as small as it is, and um, but it's more for someone who doesn't need the extras. I love them. I like them a lot. What are the price points that they go for? Yeah, it gets a great, great pricing under $1,000. So you get $999 for the EF12, everything all in one, mm -hmm. and then you get $799 for the EF11. So okay. that's really the sweet spot. Okay, so, really so about a two hundred dollar difference if you want smarts, the big and the bigger sound system, is which which is quite quite reasonable because if I went out and got a halfway decent Bluetooth speaker, I um I would be a pro um I, and and a um a smart stick, a decent smart stick, um I would be approaching that price pretty quickly. And now I have other things that I have to travel with or move from space to space. So, yeah. so, so you said, so the pricing is amazing. So Kenny, I am, I love these products. Like I said, I think, I think they're a great addition to the um, Epson lineup. So if to learn more about the um, Epic Vision Mini, you can, you can check out um, Epson's website, or you could check out our detailed review of the EF12 yeah. on our projector review website, because, and find out why Again, we gave it a hot product award. So Kenny, thank you very much for, for coming. And for those out there, um, take care. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everybody.